Hi and welcome to your Niagara News headlines for Tuesday, September 11th, provided by Bullet News Niagara. I'm Annie Sylvester. Let's start things off with a look at the weather brought to you by Niagara Battery and Tire, the number one choice for your tire, battery and automotive needs in the Niagara Peninsula. Well, we do have some great weather ahead in the forecast. Checking into tonight, first off, clear skies, a low of 17 for Wednesday, sunny, a high of 27, Thursday, sunny again, a low of 18, a high of 29, Friday, sunny, a low of 19, a high of 29, and for Saturday, a mix of sun and clouds, a 40% chance of showers, a low of 18, a high of 26. And now let's turn to some of your top local headlines. First, in Marine Land, where the Niagara Falls Humane Society has raised questions about basic standards of care for some of the land mammals during an inspection yesterday, agents were sent to the theme park following concern expressed about the welfare of the non-marine animals, and in a statement released last evening, they said they'd conducted an inspection of the living quarters and as a result requested further information and documentation from Marine Land. Last month, the Toronto Star published allegations made by former staff over the mistreatment of aquatic mammals at the park, which sparked an investigation by the Ontario SPCA, the NFHS, and the Canadian Association of Zoos and Aquariums. No findings from the initial inspections have been released, and the spotlight has been further placed now on the theme park after the Toronto Star revealed allegations concerning the diet and conditions of its land animals, including charges of casual brutality when animals need to be put down. And keeping with the animals for a moment, Niagara Falls Council is set to debate a resolution on animals in captivity tonight. For more information on this, please read the column by Janice Wing entitled Towards the Future, the Complicated Business of Developing Laws. An investigation into a series of Niagara break-ins at car washes that has been going on for the past several months has led to the arrest of two St. Catharines men. The men had been targeting the change in the coin boxes and were apprehended September the 4th after police observed them breaking into the Midtown car wash in Waterdown and then arrested them without incident in St. Catharines. They found nearly 1900 bucks due to the robbery. Hamilton police charged the men with two counts of break and enter after they were transported back to their jurisdiction. Niagara police have also issued warrants for one count of break and enter and various other charges. Charged are 50-year-old John Lennock and 35-year-old Robert LaPlante. A woman with a knife robbed the R&D Variety Store on Culp Street in Niagara Falls last night. Niagara police say just after 9 p.m., the suspect entered the store and demanded money and was very aggressive with the owner, but there were no injuries. The suspect is described as a white female, approximately 5'7", with a thin build, fair skin, wearing large sunglasses, dark blue or black hooded sweatshirt, light blue jeans, and a pink and black zebra print belt. Well, people who feed the geese in St. Catharines won't be facing a fine after enough city councillors rejected a proposed bylaw prohibiting the practice that would have seen a minimum $105 fine. On Monday night, councillors voted 8-5 to five against the proposal. City staff claim the birds are out of control and causing a problem along the waterfront and in local parks where they leave messy droppings and sometimes scare children and others with their aggressive behaviour. The topic is controversial, however, with some calling bird feeding harmless family fun and others saying they'd like to see hard data about the threat the birds actually cause. But for now, bird feeders can rest easy. In Fort Erie, Douglas Moria Hospital is getting some major capital improvements aimed at providing better care for patients facing the end of their life. Last night, officials from the Niagara Health System, the Niagara Health System Foundation, and the Douglas Memorial Hospital Foundation gathered inside the former maternity ward at DMH to announce $500,000 in funding has been set aside for the improvements, which include a combined space for palliative care and complex care patients. According to Dr. Kim Sher, the lead physician in the palliative care program at the hospital, when the ward is complete, these patients will be cared for in an environment that will provide solace and help them live their final days in dignity. Some of the key improvements include consolidating patients with similar needs to better serve them, updating building systems, and installing a new nurse call system. Please read the full story on Bullet News Niagara, written by John Robbins. And with that, we'll take a short break. More news in a moment. Hi and welcome back. 
An aneurysm is the term used when a blood vessel in the brain ruptures. Jamie Bloom of St. Catharines is an aneurysm survivor, and she recently sat down with John Storm to talk about her ordeal. Let's take a preview now of Stormwatch. I experienced a, a major headache. Um, I've never had a headache like that before. It was a very sudden onset headache um, and a very stiff neck and uh, numbness and tingling in my foot. Uh, that was the beginning of, of the actual aneurysm rupturing from what I was told. And what did you think at the time? Did you think it's just a migraine or? Yeah, I, I didn't understand. I thought maybe uh, it was a migraine, uh, but I'd never had a sudden onset like that. I thought maybe it was like a, a stroke, my heart. You know, I'd read some things about that. Maybe it was that. So you went to the hospital? I did. In St. Catharines? I did. I went to the hospital in St. Catharines. My husband drove me. Um, it should be that you should go in an ambulance. You should never get driven to the hospital. You should go in an ambulance. Why is that? Um, it's uh, safer. Uh, when somebody's concerned about you and they're driving quite quickly through the city, it's not a good thing. And it's you get to the hospital much quicker as well as somebody can help you immediately. Immediate help is very important. My understanding of your story, Jamie, was you went to emergency, you sat there, your brain is bleeding. Yes. You sat there. Any idea how long? I sat there at least 20 minutes, maybe more, which is crucial time as well. I should have been attended right What away. did they say to you when you came in? The attending nurse at the desk said to me that I was probably having a panic attack and uh, that I would be fine and I just needed to wait uh, a little bit. And that's probably the worst advice My that you goodness. could have. My yes. goodness, yes. that's a lesson we can take. <laughs> yes, and it push to get seen right away. It's yeah. a very, very important to have your assessment right away. And, and those symptoms are common with everybody. That's what the aneurysm does. It gives you a major headache. Your neck is very, very stiff. There may be some other symptoms that you may not be able to talk. You may faint, you may not. But it's always that headache that will tell you that's a great indicator to get to the hospital. So did they know what to do at the general? Did, were you admitted uh, overnight to the general? I was not admitted overnight. Uh, as soon as they assessed that I had a bleed on my brain, they immediately sent me uh, via ambulance to the Hamilton Hospital, which was fantastic care. For the full interview, please go to Stormwatch under Bullet TV. And that wraps up today's headlines. I'm Annie Sylvester. For everyone here at Bullet News Niagara, good night.